Please be seated. We have children's church. We're all here in America, and one of the things that's important and necessary to be to live here is that uh, you should have a job. <laughs> and I'm sure most of you have jobs already. Uh, others are still looking. Others can't work because of. Uh, uh, immigration status. Um, they call them, they, they call that chemist, chemists, chemists, maasa, <laughs> dependent. But you see, a world's standard of world's uh, thinking that success depends on the kind of job you're doing, the kind of income you're taking, hmm? and that also goes through with the kind of house you live or the kind of car you drive. But you know what? Many people have learned how to make a living, but not how to live. And that is the reason why Jesus came here on earth and tell us how to be successful in life. Now, God's standard of success is not like man's standard of success. Man's standard of success is, you know, uh, got a big income, more than enough, and you got a big house and nice cars and so on and so forth. That's the American dream, all right? And that's why many Filipinos come and many from other countries come here in the U.S. because of that dream. But when you look at the Bible, God wants all believers, all Christians to be successful, not the kind of success that the world sees, a world uh, standard of success, but God's standard of success. So you will notice in our um, a bulletin that I have entitled our sermon today success God's way hmm? you don't have a bulletin please raise your hand we have extra bulletins at the back hmm? success God's way and I believe that success God's way is being the kind of person that God wants you to be. Because God has a plan for all of our lives. And we have different plans. God has given different plans for us because we, each one of us is unique. And as long as we accomplish what God wants us to accomplish, as long as we become what God wants us to become, then in God's eyes, in God's standard, that is success. It's not how much money you have in your pocket. It's not how much, how big your house is. It's not uh, how nice your car is. And so in the passage that we just read, it's a very important passage because it teaches us something about success. In fact, it teaches us the hindrances to success. And so once again, let's let's open our Bibles to that pa pa page in your in your Bible. If you have your Bible with you, uh, open to that passage in Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 to 28. Uh, if you left your Bible at home, be sure to bring it next week. <laughs> 
If you don't have a Bible, be sure to acquire a Bible. Yeah. It's so easy to acquire here in America. Bibles are so, so many here in America. There, there's, there are countries nowadays that they prohibit, they prohibit carrying or reading the Bible. You have the Bible, if you are reading the Bible or even going to a Bible study, you get arrested. So we are so privileged, we are so uh, fortunate here in America that we can carry our Bible, we can read our Bible freely. In fact, we can select what translation, what version of the Bible we, can, we, can, we want to read. So this passage that uh, um, Maggie read a while ago, Matthew 16, 21 to 28, is a very familiar familiar passage in the life of our Lord. It happened right after the great confession or the great declaration of Peter. Remember when Peter, when Jesus asked his disciples, who do you think I am? And Peter declared, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus Christ commended him from that in that in uh, with that declaration and he said Peter upon this rock I will build my church oh what a tremendous and wonderful declaration that Peter did this also happened a few days before the triumphal entry the entry of Jesus Christ to Jerusalem which we now call Palm Sunday, all right? Today is Palm Sunday. And right before Palm Sunday, Jesus uh, had this time with his disciples. Of course, after Palm Sunday, a few days later, Jesus was arrested, and then Jesus, uh, he went through that suffering, and then he died on the cross, and the following Sunday, he rose again from the dead. So that's a like a background of what we just read. But I believe that God's only way for success is simply following Jesus. Some people think, here are the steps, the 12 easy steps for success. God has only one step. God's only way for success, God's way, God's standard, is following Jesus. But then in following Jesus, there are some hindrances. Hindrances as a Christian. Hindrances in becoming what God wants you to be. Hindrances in obeying God. Hindrances in following God and becoming like Him. At the same time, as a church, the success of the church also depends on our following Jesus. And there are also hindrances which are similar to our hindrances. The question is, what can hinder you from being successful in God's eyes? What can hinder our church from becoming or accomplishing its purpose of being a successful church? Well, there are three in this passage. Okay? So that's why it's a biblical uh, expression of this uh, hindrances. The first one is the lack of perception. Lack of perception. If it's been uh, not realizing or not knowing. Hmm? Being ignorant. Being uninformed of the Lord's will and plan for our lives. In verse 21, see we're going back to that passage. In verse 21, from that time, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things from the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. Now this verse tells us that Jesus began to tell his disciples what is going, what, what's going to happen next in his life. He's going to Jerusalem, and then he was going to be arrested and to, to suffer 
and to die in the hands of the elders, chief priests, and the scribes. And if you are one of the disciples listening to Jesus Christ, you'll probably do the same thing what Peter did. In verse 22, what did Peter do? Peter told him, or took him aside, and began to rebuke him, saying, far be, it you, far, far, far be it from you, Lord, this shall never happen to you. Oh, wow. This shall never happen to you. What do you think, be, uh, what do you think was in the mind of Peter? Why did he say that? It was the Lord Jesus Christ who was saying it. He was the Lord Jesus Christ who was telling them what is going to happen. But Peter came and said, This shall never happen to you, Lord. He's probably just concerned about Jesus, right? Jesus was a good friend. Jesus was the Lord Jesus Christ. A very good company to, to the disciples. He has shown a lot of good things. He has uh, performed a lot of miracles. And when Jesus said, I'm going to Jerusalem and suffer and die, Peter was just concerned. But in fact, Peter was a Jew, an Israelite. And according to Israelites, they have this notion in their mind that the Messiah, which they concluded that Jesus is the Messiah, the Messiah would set up a kingdom, an earthly military political kingdom in order to restore the kingdom of Israel. Because at that particular moment, they were under the Rome, the Roman Empire. And so, just like an ordinary Jew, they expect the Messiah to be great. They will not expect the Messiah to die. That's their expectation. And with this faulty messianic concept in mind, he could not imagine a suffering and dying Messiah. And when he pulled Jesus aside and tried to talk him out of it, he thought, you know, he thought that he's doing a good deed. Right? Lord, this, this is, I'm just concerned, this should not, and this should not happen to you. He thought that he was he's doing a very, very good favor to the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah? But no. When he pulled Jesus aside and he, he said that, He didn't know that that was God's will and plan for Jesus. And so, this is the problem of Peter. Being ignorant of God's will and plan. Being uninformed of God's will and plan for Jesus. The lack of perception. And many of us are just like Peter, you know? We're trying to do good, good things for Jesus. We're trying to serve him. We're trying to do things, but we're not seeking his will. We do not know what God's will and plan for our lives. Remember last Sunday I preached about the importance of knowing God's will. The importance of knowing his word. And the reason why we are so misdirected, the reason why we... We don't know what to do with our life is that we don't study and read the Word of God. The Word of God equals the will of God. And so that's Peter. His problem is ignorance. He was ignorant about what the will of God and plan for Jesus Christ. He could not perceive the purposes of God. That's lack of perception.
And so what did Jesus do? Well, look again in verse, uh, the following verse. Verse 23, he says, But he turned and said to Peter, Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Did you notice that? He called Peter Satan. Yeah. I wouldn't like to be called Satan. He called Peter Satan. And then he said, You are a hindrance to me. For you are not setting your mind on things of God, on the things of God, but on the things of men. So that's clearly said that Jesus uh, are say, is saying to Peter, you are like Satan. You are trying to oppose the will of God. Yes, Peter might be sincere. Hmm? He did not really want to anything, anything to happen to our Lord. Some of us may be sincere in serving God. Huh? Sincere in uh, 